నమస్తే ఫ్రెండ్స్ వెల్కమ్ యూ ఆల్ ఫర్ ది బయాలజీ సెషన్ దిస్ ఈజ్ మంజునాథ్ గౌడ ఎస్ ఏర్ టుడే విల్ గోయింగ్ టు డిస్కస్ అబౌట్ ద చాప్టర్ ఎక్స్క్రీటరీ ప్రోడక్ట్స్ ఇన్ దేర్ ఎలిమినేషన్ వాట్ ఆర్ దీస్ ఎక్స్క్రీటరీ ప్రోడక్ట్స్ వేస్ట్ నైట్రోజనస్ వాట్ ఇస్ ది మెటీరియల్స్ or maybe some other waste which includes what is it, the excess in excess which will be produced in the body we will consider what is it, those material as the excretory products in mainly it includes excretory product it includes a waste like nitrogenous waste and other materials which will be produced in excess even these what is it, the excess material along with the waste we will going to consider as a excretory products should be eliminated from the body if they accumulate they are harmful to the body if if the homeostasis should maintain if body should maintain homeostasis then these waste should be eliminated so what is that homeostasis maintenance of steady state maintenance of maintenance of the steady state within the body right so that steady state maintenance of steady state which will be call it as homeostasis what exactly this steady state in terms of what mainly like maintaining what is it the internal constant environment that is osmotic concentration of the body fluid osmotic concentration of the body fluid and also internal constant environment plus internal constant environment id eradu maintain madadaga then we can say that homeostatic condition is what is that occurred that homeostasis where it is very important for a normal life without any problem and within a range it should be within a range right where the all those metabolic process can can occur right within a range where all those what is it within a range where all those it should be within a range within a range where all those metabolic process can occur metabolic processes can occur so this is what you have to keep in mind so that range is what we will consider that what is that homeostatic what is that range or a condition right so if once attain that is what homeostasis so in this class we will take how these waste will be produced and how these waste will be eliminated out of the body including excretory organs which involves a excretory organs and what are the excretory organs in lower animals and higher animals along with that the function of kidney and structure of kidney structure of nephron urine formation and other disorders related to this and regulation of what is it, the urine formation so first excretion in what is it, the animals so in this we can say that there are many what is it, the <coughs> animals before going to take those lower animals let me define that what is excretion right that is removal of nitrogenous waste or metabolic waste removal of metabolic waste removal of metabolic waste we can't be able to consider that all those metabolic waste which will be nitrogenous waste we can't consider right why so nitrogenous waste are that the waste materials produced produced during metabolism of protein during metabolism of protein this is very very important metabolism of what is that 
the proteins very important make a note of it metabolism protein the metabolism aadre bartakanta waste enide that is nitrogenous waste so major nitrogenous waste it includes what is that ammonia urea uric acid ammonia urea uric acid based on that animals are classified into ammonotelic animals ureotelic animals and uricotelic animals so removal of metabolic waste at right? ammonia urea uric acid not only these nitrogenous these are the major along with that other organic acids other organic acids which will be produced in excess along with that along with that inorganic acids along with that what is it the inorganic acids will be eliminated out which includes what is it the some salts water and carbon dioxide salts water and carbon dioxide so this should be eliminated so elimination or removal of these things which will be considered as excretion the organs which are involved in that they are called as excretory excretory organs and the system is called as excretory system so in this chapter mainly about human excretory system they are going to ask so let us take excretory organs right so organs are of many different types so as i mentioned here so to eliminate ammonia there will be different types of organs urea uric acid in different different organisms first see these waste will be produced what is that by means of or uh, two sources the nitrogenous waste which will be produced nitrogenous waste produced by two sources or you can say produced by two ways how one is that is exogenous source metabolism of metabolism of exogenous source and metabolism of endogenous source so we know that the major what is that the nitrogenous waste or ammonia urea uric acid which will be produced during what is that protein metabolism sir what are the other what is that the metabolic waste we can also consider what is that the carbon dioxide right excess water and salt so carbon dioxide is a what is that we won't consider that as a nitrogenous waste it is a metabolic waste which will be produced during what is that metabolism of metabolism of carbohydrates and fats this is very very important thing that during metabolism of carbohydrates and fat carbon dioxide will be produced during metabolism of protein these nitrogenous waste will be produced major nitrogenous waste major nitrogenous waste keep it in mind this question we may expect <coughs> next that is what what is the meaning of exogenous and endogenous exogenous means that is the source we can say that where deamination of excess or unwanted amino acid in the food that is what the food you will going to take from that food right removal of amino group that is called as deamination deamination of what is that amino group right this is very important we can say that what is it during deamination right that is removal of amino group from amino acids right so generally amino acids are the building blocks of proteins during deamination of amino acid that amino groups will be removed amino group will be removed so that will we can say that is where exactly we can say that is nh2 so general uh, structure i think we are all familiar with that r c c o o h and c h nh2 group so this nh2 group will be removed right remove that process of removal of amino group is called as deamination deamination and after that this will be utilized for the production of other what is that organic acids other organic acids synthesis madlike use madkolutte body but this amino group after remove right that will undergo oxidation right that is why the ammonia which will be produced nh3 
produced because of deamination or you can say that oxidative deamination en ant helbodu oxidative deamination leads to the formation of ammonia oxidative deamination first deamination removal of amino group and then oxidation that leads to the formation of ammonia and ammonia further will be converted into what is it the urea and urea from that uric acid in different different organism but ammonia produce aage agutte ammonia produce aadmele that is in what is it in organisms like higher animals ammonia will be converted into urea in the liver and in some organisms it will be converted into uric acid so this we can take that later when next the concept we have to keep it in mind that animals are categorized into monotelic ureotelic and then uricotelic just we can take those organisms based on the nitrogenous waste excreted right if ammonia is excreted monotelic monotelic so this is very important just i'll give brief note on this monotelic what is that ureotelic and then uricotelic so these are the organisms uricotelic so what is it monotelic they will going to eliminate ammonia right and then it is ureotelic urea uric acid here the one question we will going to get the here to eliminate to excrete or to remove ammonia abundant water is required abundant water is required why because it is highly toxic and one more thing as soon as it will be produced it should be converted into highly toxic right that is one function of the liver highly toxic material will be converted should be converted into less toxic or it should eliminate or should eliminate out of the body so that is what right ammonia if it is produced that should be dissolved in more or that the amount of water and then it will be gets diluted and that will be eliminated out so here ammonia is highly toxic and one thing and then highly soluble in water readily soluble in water and urea compared to the what is it the ammonia it is a less but you can say moderately toxic better to say that moderately moderately toxic and soluble less soluble than ammonia less soluble than ammonia and when you going to take this is the least toxic least toxic we may get this question and it is not soluble it is very less or you can say that not soluble in the water right so this is what least soluble that is here you can say that very less not completely very what is it least toxic and least soluble in or moderately toxic and moderately soluble in what is it the water and highly toxic and highly soluble in water so this question we can get examples here we have to keep it in mind that almost all the invertebrates right invertebrates which includes amoeba planaria hydra which includes amoeba planaria hydra they're going to eliminate what is it the waste through their body surface through their body surface no well developed what is an excretory organ and here we can also say that generally the planaria earthworm tadpole larva right so here earthworm right here sorry that is we can say that the paramecium paramecium and here you can write that is planaria right so planaria which is a flat form and then earthworm annelida and along with that we can also say that the uh, tadpole larva of the tadpole larva in case of amphibians so these will be going to eliminate what is it in the form of through urine nitrogenous waste ammonia in the form of urine so this is very important thing you have to keep it in mind that and next ureotelic animals ureotelic animals mainly includes a cartilaginous fishes keep it in mind here we can say bony fishes ammonia bony fishes most of them are what is it the marine most of them are what is it marine bony fishes and also some of them are the freshwater fishes so here cartilaginous fishes 
so for this ureotelic animals example right these are the examples cartilaginous fishes right so cartilage not bony fishes cartilaginous fishes eliminate what is that the nitrogenous waste in the form of urea cartilaginous fishes mammals and you can say that the land amphibians or you can say that adult amphibians like frog frog toad right so this is what you have to keep in mind here birds and reptiles most of them are what is it, the land reptiles you can say and insects right insects which will going to what is it, eliminate nitrogenous waste in the form of is that so keep in mind these are the terrestrial reptiles and terrestrial insects terrestrial reptiles and terrestrial insects and birds so next move on to the some organs which acts as what is it, the <coughs> excretory organs see in some lower animals as i mentioned right this is what some are amniotic some are ureotelic some are uricotelic and how these organs which will be eliminated means what are the organs involved in the elimination of what is it just i will mention as i have already mentioned in protozoa let us take in order animal kingdom right protozoa protozoa and then after that poripara protozoa it includes amoeba poripara right that is you can say the sponges and nidaria nidarians are also called as what cylindrates so these which will going to eliminate through their body surface no well developed what is that excretory organ and one and second one very important question always they are going to ask that is a platyelminthes flat worms flat worms and these flat worms eliminate nitrogenous waste with the help of flame cells flame cells which are also called as solenocytes solenocytes so that is in the platyelminthes and next to that we can say that the aschelminthes means round worms aschelminthes right in the animal kingdom we studied i think you people have studied that round worms right so here these will going to what is it use the rennete cells rennete cells or you can say sometime they will say h cells h cells and annelida right annel annulated ring like structure which mainly includes annelida which shows what is it the true metamorphism right annelida which includes a nephridia tubular structure nephridia that is annelida in that we can mention that is earthworm earthworm and next after that annelida this is very important you have to keep it in mind this platyelminthes and arthropoda most of the time we are going to get question from this only arthropoda there are many different types but mainly in the cockroach they are going to ask that is a terrestrial insects if they are going to ask the terrestrial what is that the insects i will write right mainly which includes a cockroach there we can say you are nen pagutha nimage that is malphigian tubule alva so that is the one okay aquatic adre right example you can say that the prawn respiratory organ gills anta helidivi prawn generally belongs to crustacea right crustacea so it is a crustacean respiratory organ is gill whereas the excretory organ il bandaga generally we'll say green glands or antennary glands green or antennary glands and particularly idu question aga chances ide right antennary glands okay what is it the some spider where i have mentioned arachnida coxal glands we can say that the coxal glands so in terrestrial insects in terrestrial insects what is that mainly malphigian tubule cockroach they are going to ask direct question right and then in prawn even though it is arthropoda that is antennary glands or green glands and arachnida that is the spider and all those things in that we can see coxal glands coxal glands so that is enough right and in other organisms it will be very renal renal glands in mollusks right in mollusk it will be includes 
right renal glands and in higher animals like you can say that the some echinoderms it is absent that is the uh, two feet which helps in the elimination but developed a specialized excretory organ are absent and in some we can say almost all invertebrates will use a word that is called as protonephridia tubular form of nephron it is not what is it the complex it is simple simple tubular excretory organ simple tubular what is that excretory organ or you can say excretory not organ that is a tubule tubule is called as protonephridia right and next to that you can say mesonephridia and next to that metanephridia so this is the thing to keep it in mind on all chordates paired kidney it is is it the all chordates pair pair kidney will be there so this is what to paired kidneys will be there let us take some question related to this what we have discussed now uric acid is the principal nitrogenous waste so we discussed that there is a less availability of water they're going to use less what is it the availability in the environment where they're going to consume less availability of water those animals will going to what is it eliminate and least soluble so mainly uric acid as i mentioned that is in the birds and what is it reptiles land reptiles right and mainly in this what is it the birds are very important and land reptiles right <clears throat> and also we can say that the insects we mentioned right so arthropoda right so here land insects right so that is terrestrial in both these cases we can use terrestrial so let us take mammals are ureotelic and the mollusks which will consider that is the generally the mollusks which comes in the invertebrate right where they're going to eliminate the ammonia right and birds and lizards so birds are uric acid and the land the, the <coughs> land reptiles lizards so what is that land reptiles and birds so answer for that is second one frog which eliminates the what is it the mainly which eliminates urea whereas a tadpole tadpole which eliminates ammonia ammonia so that is what you have to keep in mind cartilaginous is also what is it the urea and insects uric acid whereas a bony fishes ammonia bony fishes they eliminate ammonia next so answer for that first one is birds and lizard in amoeba amoeba which belongs to there's no we discussed that is generally that is a protozoa in that protozoa it comes under what is that amoeboid or pseudopodia right that is amoeboid or is it with the help of generally what is it the pseudopodia that we're going to eliminate the waste <clears throat> so generally in this case whenever we're going to talk about this the pseudopodia which will be formed by generally the contractile vacuole right the protoplasmic streaming which helps in the formation of pseudopodia and there will be a contractile vacuole that will going to eliminate the waste so answer for that is contractile vacuole next major form of nitrogenous waste excreted by animals so in some urea ammonia and uric acid all the above these are the what is that all these all these what is that considered as a nitrogenous waste sir is there any other we can say that they see in some less quantities of nitrogenous waste we can say least what is that the uh, importance will be there for this uh, what is that excreted in the form of less quantities what is that excreted mainly uh, nitrogenous less quantities of nitrogenous waste excreted in the form of what is it one is a creatinine and in creatine right so creatinine and creatine and some in some organisms we can say trimethylamine oxide right so trimethylamine oxide tma trimethylamine oxide so these are the what is that other very least quantities of nitrogen will be eliminated in in these forms next protonephridia are flame cells which are also called as solenocytes almost all invertebrates will use protonephridia right 
so as we know that generally uh, flame cells we can also easily we can remember f l flat worms so which comes mainly includes what is it platyelminthes mainly includes platyelminthes right so in this case a very important thing and and some cephalocardate where you can say that the brachiostoma right which includes both platyelminthes and also brachiostoma that eliminates the nitrogenous waste which is in the form of right? generally these eliminates nitrogenous waste in the form of ammonia with the help of flame cells because of their what is it the shape which forms tubular connection will be there and the flames flame like what is it the cells right which will going to collect the waste and they are going to eliminate and out of the body so that is why this will be called as flame cell next removal of excess salt salt in marine fishes so let me what is it the give some other what is it the organs in the vertebrates as we mentioned what is it in some we have malpighian tubules green glands what is it the coxal glands and protonephridia and most of the vertebrates which are going to eliminate the nitrogenous waste with the help of kidney and in case of what is it the vertebrates we have additional accessory we can say that the accessory excretory glands sorry excretory organs what are those accessory mainly includes kidney generally these are the principal what is it the excretory organs we know that excretes nitrogenous waste and then other some toxins right and water minerals excess salts water mineral salts mineral salts we may get this question also and here skin we know that that is a little amount of water and small amount of nitrogenous waste water and small amount of and same like that lungs we know that that is a carbon dioxide waste which will be produced through the metabolism of carbohydrates and fat that will be eliminated and significant amount of water which will be eliminated by the lungs and the fourth one liver as we all know that it is a principal organ where the nitrogenous waste will be produced but it also helps in the excretion of digestion tract lo didi excretion of bile pigments with the help of bile juice bile pigments with the help of bile juice so that is what and major role of the liver is what is it formation of excretory products keep it in mind it helps in the formation of excretory products formation of excretory product that is nitrogenous waste but that will be eliminated by kidney so and in some organisms like what is it the uh, marine fishes or you can say gills used to remove what is it gills used to remove excess salts so excess salt will be removed by what is that gills in marine fishes marine fishes and salt glands marine birds and amphibians marine birds and reptiles sorry what is that salt glands will be used to remove excess salt to remove excess salt only that is in what is that marine birds and reptiles it includes marine birds and reptiles salt gland right salt gland which will be helps to remove the excess salt that is in the marine birds and marine reptiles and intestine also helps in the removal of calcium what is that excess calcium salts that is intestine so this are the accessory organs or accessory organs so let us take sixth question excess salt just now we discussed that excess salt in what is that mainly in the marine fishes if they going to ask excess salt marine fishes they are asked we can select gills if they are going to ask generally the excess salt from marine birds and reptiles instead of fishes if they are going to ask marine birds and reptiles in select madbekagutha option no that is salt glands only option illa just we can take this salt glands so this is one next most soluble nitrogenous waste as we mentioned that ammonia what is that will be easily and readily soluble in water so to eliminate here generally we'll say that to eliminate the 1 gram of what is that the nitrogenous waste that is which is in the form of urea that can be 
require water so based on that actually the animals will be that they categorized here if you consider that 0.5 liter or 500 ml right 500 ml of water is required to eliminate what is it the one gram of what is that ammonia one gram of ammonia so this is very important so more water is required to eliminate what is it the 0.05 liter that is something around 50 ml s yes. so something around 50 ml of water is required to eliminate the 1 gram of what is it the urea and 0.005 or you can say that 0.001 better to say that way. what is it in that we can say 1 ml right 1 ml is enough to eliminate 1 gram of uric acid so see how much what is it the talk less toxic it is and least soluble moderately moderately toxic and moderately soluble highly toxic highly soluble so this most soluble nitrogenous waste is urea least uric acid moderate urea next average quantity of urea excreted daily by humans per day generally in this case the we can take the an, an average which will be eliminated <coughs> by human being right something what is at the 40 to 25 sorry that is in the normal blood group we can say that 70 to uh, 17 we'll take up that question that is 17 to 20 20 gram which will be there that is the per 100 ml we'll say per 100 ml this will be there <clears throat> and next whenever this the average which will be eliminated that is 25 to 30 actually we can also say that on an average as the it will going to eliminate uh, 15 to 20 gram they will say but we can consider that is the answer for that uh, 7 17 to 20 gram and average in the blood we can consider that 17 to 20 gram and here for this we can take uh, generally so that will be eliminated in the blood we can say 17 to 30 gram will be there right 17 to 30 normal normal what is it the urea level normal urea level in the what is it the blood so that we have that question which will be eliminated something around what is it the uh, 17 to 20 gram and the elimination where you can say that the urea and an average it will be eliminated 25 to 30 grams right so that is we can take so level is 17 to what is it the 30 mg sorry right in the 100 ml of blood in the 100 ml of blood so gram which will be eliminated right so this is what you have to keep it in mind next an average per day keep it in mind per day not per minute right so but the air will say glomerular filtrate rate right per minute they may ask that is 125 ml we'll discuss that later per minute per day something around 180 liters per day glomerular filtrate rate you can take that. and the cockroach right in cockroach the chief excretory product that is we discuss that is the insect what is that which generally land insects that is a uric acid not the urea so next what is the question here we can say that that is what with the help of malpighian tubules here excretory organs are malpighian tubules next uricotelic animal is so which among these is a uricotelic animal we know that generally land reptiles land reptiles birds and what is it along with that we also mentioned in that what is that insects land reptiles keep in mind this question definitely such questions will be there land reptiles land reptiles land insects and along with that the birds birds so that is lizard we have that is the answer right next 
whereas this shark which is generally cartilaginous fish that is urea which will be eliminate and whale is also that is urea and salamander what is that that is amphibia land amphibian so amphibia generally we can say that the <clears throat> in case of amphibians we can see uric that is urea only here also urea salamander right so these are fishes where that we going to eliminate which one of these animal <clears throat> is amniotic we know that mammals or most of the mammals are ureotic what is that and then rat and then teleost what is that the teleost shark we know that that is also eliminated the what is that the urea here teleost right bony fishes right so generally we can say which comes under bony fishes right that is why we going to select cartilaginous fishes what is that ureotelic right <coughs> cartilaginous fishes ureotelic like us right mammals terrestrial amphibians and marine fishes are terrestrial amphibians anaga uric acid ant helthive terrestrial amphibians age marine fishes andaga enalli most of these are generally we can say bony fishes ammonia so uric acid and ammonia so what we can select here the answer for that the terrestrial animals the terrestrial amphibian and marine fishes so whenever we will going to say that the marine fishes uh, which will eliminate no, amphibians sorry that is the terrestrial amphibians which comes under urea only right so that is frog urea okay and bony fishes that is they are going to eliminate ammonia whereas the in case of that the most of that generally you can say that the here cartilaginous fishes bony fishes both what is it the marine and freshwater fishes here the cartilaginous fishes which generally eliminates the what is it ammonia generally eliminates the ammonia mm, bony fishes eliminates the ammonia these eliminates urea so so that we can select both are urea amphibians are also urea marine fishes are also urea that is answer for that is ureotelic correct yes so ammonotelic means generally the bony fishes right bony fishes is going to eliminate and in case of marine fishes generally the cartilaginous fishes right very few we can say that the bony fishes are marine and then the fresh water if you want to consider that ammonia right next so that is ureotelic that is terrestrial amphibian and marine fishes next antennary glands as we discussed that the antennary glands right so which is in case of what is it, the uh, insects right as we have mentioned that the in the synapses we mentioned what is the answer for that they mainly helps in the excretion right these olfactory reception reception that is in the what is it, the odor or smell and the gustatory that is taste right next nitrogenous waste products are eliminated mainly as right urea in tadpole no that is ammonia in tadpole ammonia in frog they are rule talk back it right ammonia that is ammonia in tadpole and then adult frog urea wrong ammonia in tadpole urea in adult yes it's correct urea in both tadpole on this wrong urea in tadpole uric acid wrong so answer for that is what is that the second one next which of the following most what is it the toxic waste matter so already we discussed that that is the ammonia next majority of the major nitrogenous waste are produced during so as we discussed major nitrogenous waste means what generally that is what you can say that the urea ammonia right ammonia urea and then uric acid ammonia urea and uric acid so most of these are produced during the metabolism of proteins only right so metabolism of carbohydrates that is carbon dioxide will be produced 
right metabolism both proteins and fats no during protein is during protein these will be produced so only proteins so answer for that is three which of the following that is metabolism of carbohydrates and proteins carbohydrates carbon dioxide proteins nitrogenous waste so only proteins which are responsible for the production of majority of the major nitrogenous waste next which of the following set contains all of what is that ureotelic animals this is very important generally uh, whenever we're going to take this question just we can recollect the examples among those right so first bony fishes right or not that is ammonotelic mammals or ureotelic terrestrial insects or uric they going to uricotelic so first one is wrong marine fishes that is generally we'll say that the marine fishes which we can say that is they're going to what is it, the eliminate mainly what is it, the in the form of urea and adult amphibians that is also urea terrestrial mammals all these will going to eliminate urea bony fishes no ammonia aquatic amphibians no that is also ammonia terrestrial mammals urea this is wrong aquatic insects no aquatic insects which will going to eliminate the ammonia amphibians what is it, the urea and land snail that is mollusks which is going to eliminate the mola land snails eliminates generally that is urea right so land snails right and here the answer for that is marine fishes right marine what is it, the fishes amphibians adult amphibians that is what frog which will going to eliminate the urea so second is the correct answer which of the following statement is incorrect so whenever we will going to take these questions keep it in mind always you first make a note of it if may majority of the fishes which comes under what is it, the if bony fishes are there ammonia only if cartilaginous fishes urea you keep it in mind in case of fishes in case of land amphibians like frog you keep it in mind that is urea whereas a tadpole tadpole aquatic amphibians that is generally ammonia right tadpole generally that is always it will going to express ammonia so this is what now let us recollect that incorrect mammals and frogs are ureotelic correct birds and land snails are uricotelic animals so birds and land what is that these snails if you consider what is that the in this case the land snails as we have mentioned that which will going to eliminate birds uric acid land snail in the previous result one will mention that urea correct right next birds and reptiles are what is that the ureotelic animals birds are right in which we can't select that so birds reptiles or ureotelic animals so incorrect statement they are the uricotelic birds are the birds and land reptiles which will consider they are the uricotelic animals correct dilwa this is wrong statement that is uricotelic animals whereas birds land snails uricotelic animals that is correct land snails aquatic snails are monotelic sorry here in the previous slide we can take that is land snail this which eliminates land snail is uric acid whereas aquatic snail sorry aquatic snail which is ammonia ammonia not urea that is aquatic snail is ammonia land snail is uric acid now we can say here yeah, this is correct statement whereas what is that it is not a ureotelic that is uricotelic so wrong statement is 3 next excretory system in house fly and we know that generally the house fly which belongs to the insects diptera right so that is malphigian tubules so cabbage glands which will be there in the mollusks right mollusks will be having what is it, the these bojanus right bojanus organ of bojanus or you can say that cabbage organ present seen in mollusks next flames will be you know that what is it the flatworms 
alphagen tubules in insects nephridia what is it like anella little developed next nephridia that is what we can suggest now i mentioned that is earthworm so nephridia which helps in excretion so generally these annelida earthworm belongs to annelida in which we can see nephridia next let us take the ornithin cycle generally where i have mentioned that this cycle where exactly the uh, urea formation takes place the urea formation which takes place in the liver mainly in the mitochondria so keep it in mind that ammonia along with the carbon dioxide which enters the cycle as it enters the cycle there will be what is that ornithin that is a amino acid ends as it combines with this ornithin it is called as ornithin cycle and ornithin will be converted into what is that the citrulline and then citrulline to arginine arginine and then later after what is that the uh, it will going to catalyzed by the enzyme arginase so here we can say that the citrulline right and then citrulline which will be converted into what is it the arginine right so just you keep it in mind actually in depth we won't study this just you keep it in mind citrulline which will be converted into what is it the arginine and then that arginine in the presence of arginase and water and en enzyme called as arginase plus what is it the water which will be converted into what is it urea urea and then later that will going to what is that so urea which will be eliminated out so these are the things you have to keep it in mind so ammonia combined with what is it the carbon dioxide enters the ornithin cycle so that is why this cycle is called as ornithin cycle right <clears throat> where exactly this takes place <coughs> it in it takes place in the liver mean that mainly in the mitochondria because the energy required so that is why what is that the mitochondria <coughs> with the help of enzyme arginase arginase that arginine will be arginine will be what is that the breakdown or you can say that the hydrolyzed into what is that the urea and ornithin once again enters the cycle so this will keep on takes place so that is why it is called as ornithin cycle takes place in the liver and then mainly in the mitochondria so that is what uh, krebs krebs henslet cycle antanu kareithidana krebs henslet cycle it's a bio biochemical what is it the uh, pathway right biochemical cycle ureotelic animals right urea is formed by so just now we mentioned that with the help of what is it the ornithin cycle right so what is that the cori cycle cori cycle which takes place in the muscle and the liver what happens here we know that the excess pyruvic acid will be convert glucose will be converted into pyruvic acid and that pyruvic acid which will be further converted if it is excess that will be utilized and here it enters as a carbon dioxide it enters the along with the, the carbon dioxide that is a krebs cycle and where after that the etc electron transport chain and then where energy will be released electron transport chain finally energy we can say it is not required just you keep in mind cori cycle that excess glycogen right you are keep in mind that so excess glycogen in the muscle tissue converted into lactic acid right this is in the generally muscle so lactic acid which will be converted into glycogen we know that where glyco glyco glycogenesis takes place that is in the liver so this together which will be called it as cori cycle right in krebs cycle we know that where it enters what is the pyruvic acid and emp pathway which is also embedden merof embedden merof and then pranas parnas pathway that is what is that glycolysis glycolysis which is also called as emp pathway right next which of the following pairs of the organisms are uricotelic animals so most of the questions i have given why because definitely they will going to ask uricotelic what is that the land reptiles and birds and these are things reptiles and mammals no mammals are not these are the, the cartilaginous fish and mammals both are uricotelic both are uricotelic birds and insects 
bony fishes and lizards bony fishes ammonia so birds and lizards are the uricotelic animals next let us move on to excretory system in man so as we know that this the kidney structure generally these the principal organs of excretory organs located right in the abdominal cavity so whenever we're going to consider this there are paired kidney on either side of the abdominal cavity right and these kidney play a major role in the excretion right so generally we'll say uh, <clears throat> which lies in the abdominal cavity right so we can take that where at the level exactly So we'll, we we can take one by one first, right? So location, that is what is the shape. If you come to this shape, we can you can see easily here, right? So here I've taken that. These are bean shaped, right? Located in the abdominal cavity. What is the length and width and thickness they may ask here just i will mention here kidney bean shaped kidney and see from the inferior vena cava where what is it the which will going to renal vein which opens into the what is it, inferior vena cava and that will be going to carry what is it deoxygenated blood into the right auricle into the right auricle and aorta which brings oxygenated blood which brings oxygenated blood and that will be entered into the what is it the kidney as renal artery which leaves what is the kidney that is a renal vein leaves what is it, the kidney along with that the ureter here you can see this the structures which i have encircling here so these are what is that the ureter so ureter and renal vein leaves the <clears throat> what is it the kidney along with the lymphatic vessels whereas the renal artery which enters the kidney as a renal artery here in the next diagram you can see that renal artery that divides into afferent arteriole before in, before entering into bowman's capsule right this is very important so renal artery divides into arterioles and then it enters the bowman's capsule bowman's capsule will take up this later so that is as the it enters and leaves from this side we can take this enters and which leaves which entering the bowman's capsule that is a afferent arteriole which leaves the bowman's capsule that is a efferent arteriole right so this is one so if you're going to say this the measurement so length will be 10 to 12 centimeter almost all organs will not go back in right and then what is it the diameter we can say width width it will be 5 to 7 what is it the 5 to 7 centimeter and what is that the thickness right this question we may get 10 to 12 centimeter long 5 to 7 centimeter width and then thickness will be 1.5 to 3 they will say but we can take ncrt what we have to do three centimeter so on an average the kidney which will be way about uh, each kidney generally which is 120 to 170 gram 120 to 170 gram in male it will be little more in adult male something around 150 grams in uh, female it will be around 135 grams okay now 150 that is in the male right but on an average that weighs about 120 to 170 gram so is to nine bit kore. and kidney which is what is it the generally protected by or you can say surrounded by uh, gets protection from the what is it renal capsule i will take some other color it is gets protected from the what is that renal capsule so here this is what the renal capsule which completely what is it the covers the kidney except in the concave depression that is called as hilum this region which is called as hilum right so hilum right which the con at the mid of the at the middle of the kidney there is a concave surface the concave surface 
right where there is a depression this depression which is called as hilum this depression which is called as hilum through which all those structures what i mentioned renal artery enters renal what is it, the vein and ureter leaves the leaves the kidney so as i mentioned kidney which is surrounded by renal what is it, the capsule renal capsule this is you have to keep it in mind it is a protective covering right and generally which protects from the external shocks and injuries that is mainly made up of adipose tissue adipose tissue that is why the fat content is required that is why the fat content is required so here you have to keep it in mind that paired kidney right in this case you have to have that the paired kidney human excretory system includes paired kidneys right and left and then right little what is it the below the compared to the left one because generally when the mainly uh, you can say that the liver which will be there that will be downward and this one is little above right left kidney is little above and right kidney is little below than the left kidney and from the kidney the paired ureters ureters are generally called as kidney ducts ee name nen pettukodi kidney ducts anta karithi ureters na age whenever we will going to consider this these kidney ducts which will open from through the renal pelvis renal pelvis comes out here you can see this i'll show here in this the in this diagram see this is where exactly this what is it, the funnel shaped structure right so this which will be call it as renal pelvis so from ear funnel shape which leaves the kidney through hilum and that is called as what is that that forms a ureter they may ask this question so pelvis forms the extend out through the hilum and forms a kidney ducts and in this you have to keep it in mind urinary bladder which stores the urine temporarily right and made up of this is the smooth muscles right which contracts and relax and there are the two sphincters external sphincters and internal sphincters we'll take that during micturition or urination and urethra that will be vary in male and female generally in case of what is it, the uh, male the urethra is longer than the female so in female it is short about 2 to 4 cm whereas in male right in female whereas in male it will be something varies from what is it, the 15 to 20 cm 15 to 20 cm that opens what is it, the through generally second year uh, reproductive system odudra only we can know that that which enters the penis right that is urethra is a elongated structure enters the penis right and opens out through what is it, open opens out as a urinogenital aperture anta karithive right so this is very important so urinogenital aperture urinogenital aperture why it is called as urinogenital one it is urine which comes out from the kidney and genital as what is it extended throughout the what is it the penis it also what is it helps in the passage of sperm which comes under reproductive system hence it is called as urinogenital aperture or you can say urinogenital system right so excretory system of excretory system in male we can consider as urinogenital system right so this is what you have to keep it in mind that is enough so next kidney here the structures are very important there are the medullary pyramids right so this are the medullary what is it pyramids or uh, pyramids and these pyramids which are present seen in the what is it the medulla region here this region right from ear to ear we can consider as a cortex region there are two functional region one is a cortex and this region which we will consider as the medulla region right so medulla right which includes from ear to ear so the thing we may get in the question where exactly the medullary pyramids are present in the medullary region and in the cortex we can see here where exactly the all those structures associated will be present and that the collecting ducts which extended throughout the what is that renal pyramid or you can say medullary pyramids and that opens into the what is that the minor calyx 
right so minor calyx opens into the see this region it, it receives 1 2 3 4 so this region which is called as major calyx and major calyx that opens into the pelvis and pelvis which opens out through what is it, the hilum as the ureter so this is the what is it, the pathway of the urine we can take that while studying about the nephron structure so here the question we may get what is that exactly the renal cortex consists of so renal cortex is the outer part right it is the outer part this extension right up to here it is a renal cortex so that is the outer part and dark in color whereas the renal medulla which is striated because of this what is it, the collecting ducts right collecting ducts and whenever these collecting ducts if you consider that the collecting ducts finally which opens into a this is called as generally the opening right which will be there that is the papillae that is papilla so this is the renal papilla renal papilla so that which will going to open into the what is it this is a renal papilla many collecting ducts which opens into the renal papilla and renal papilla which what is that the two to three renal papilla which opens into the minor calyx and minor calyx two to three minor calyx joins to form what is that the major calyx so that major calyx which opens into the pelvis that is a funnel funnel shape a cavity called as what is that renal renal pelvis so with this we can move on to the questions related to right in humans the two kidneys lie so at the level of ovaries no at the same level no that is right is a little lower left kidney at higher level than the right kidney so we can select this so we can say that the left kidney a little what is it, the higher than the right kidney right so next <clears throat> in this what is that the you have to keep it in mind they won't ask exactly at the level of what at the level of last what is it, the third lumbar to the last lumbar we will take that right so here the kidneys are located in the abdominal region so here at the level they may ask sometime or uh, may not ask so just i will mention where exactly the kidneys are present so these kidneys which are located at the level of what is it the uh, last lumbar last thoracic vertebrae to the third lumbar vertebrae we can mention that so extended actually these are long 12 centimeter right so that is why so we can mention that if these what is it, the kidney here the vertebral column if you consider that is the th first cervical neck regional cervical and then what is it the thoracic after that we can get the lumbar so lower lumbar so here this is at the level what level they may ask so these which are present generally the the 12th last thoracic vertebrae what is that last thoracic vertebrae and 12th and then um, that is in between we can also say that the third lumbar vertebrae here one two three so in this region third lumbar vertebrae so 12th thoracic vertebrae and the last vertebrae and the yes so last thoracic vertebrae because there are 12 thoracic vertebra vertebrae many right so in between generally between the level of both what is the kidneys are present between the level of between the level of what is that last thoracic vertebrae that is a 12th and third lumbar sorry not fourth that is third lumbar okay this you have to keep it in mind so what is the answer for that the what is it, the 21st question right so it is generally present at the level of left kidney at left kidney at higher this is right side don't get confused and then this is left right kidney little lower right so left kidney higher so here they are given left kidney is higher than the right one so next 
excretion is the removal of we know that that is the useless ingredients undigested waste harmful and useless ingredients and you can say that they generally harmful and useless ingredients only undigested waste as to overall that is actually excreta feces the excretion and the other anything that is in the form of what is that the liquid that is mainly in the form of urine kidney in the eliminate other than excretion and tv again undigested food and the feces that is from the what is that as we discussed in the digestion fecal matter so metabolic waste products will be eliminated from this and next question each nephron has a two parts so as we know that the nephron structure here we can take proximal convoluted tubule and there will be endless loop and that endless loop which what is that the dct and dct connecting limb connecting duct and connecting duct that opens into a collecting duct <coughs> so keep it in mind collecting ducts is not the not restricted to one nephron it receives many nephron collecting duct is a part of many nephron formed by many nephron and this is what is the bowman's capsule and here the afferent arteriole which enters that forms a network of capillaries right so that is the network branches out and then which leaves that is the afferent this is the afferent arteriole and this one is the efferent arteriole and this is a bowman's capsule and this region is the pct highly coiled and this is a henless loop this one is the descending limb and this one is the ascending limb we can take that later and this is less coiled than pct that is dct and here the connecting here we can say is that these are the straight a connecting duct which opens into which opens the what is that the dct into collecting duct so these are the things so whenever we're going to say that e nephron has a two parts what is that bowman's capsule and this network of capillary which is called as glomerulus glomerulus bowman's capsule and glomerulus together which is called as malphigian body malphigian body anta karithivi athwa renal corpuscle anta karithi that is called as renal corpuscle right renal corpuscle or malphigian corpuscle and all this pct endless loop dct collecting duct all together which we call it as renal tubule nen pitkoli eradu part age now divide madabodu nephron na ondu renal tubule innondu malphigian body so cortex and medulla these are the internal structure kidney kidney functional part kidney can be divided into two functional part one is outer cortex inner medulla right so you gonna will we will going to take this this is the line the above this is the cortex region cortex region is to contour only endless loop and little part of the collecting duct will be seen in medullary region medullary region so nephron two parts the have the malphigian corpuscle we can also say malphigian body and renal tubule so answer for that is 23 3 next the basic functional unit of kidney there are what is there are we know that nephrons 1 million kidney will be there in each 1 million nephron will be there in each kidney that is around 10 lakh 10 lakhs nephrons are there in the kidney so that is what you have to keep it in mind so next nephrons are associated with we know that functional structural and function of kidney not in the respiration the alveoli neuron that is circulatory system blood capillary blood vessels nervous system neuron excretory system so with this we can finish this the part 1 we can continue with the part 2 thank you